since you hit play on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. I want to make sure that you know that our free self-love challenge is happening in February 2024 right here on the podcast. The goal of this challenge is to make creating an intentional practice of self-love even easier than ever simply by plugging in your earbuds and listening for about 10 minutes per day. But for the full experience, you're going to want to get the scorecard so you can enter the giveaways, get the daily journal prompt sent to your inbox and join us for the live wrap up podcast recording. Yes, you get to join me in the studio and record the podcast together live. It is all free. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge to sign up. Again, it is completely free. You'll get a daily reminder with the free 10 minute coaching each day and your journal prompt, and you will see a transformation over these 14 days. It is not only going to impact your relationship with yourself, but as I'll teach during the challenge, it is going to impact every single other relationship you have in your life, your relationship with other people, your relationship with teaching, that energy is going to impact every single other aspect of your life. So sign up at wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge. It's free. Now let's get to the episode. You are listening to episode number 77 of Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast, how to make an intentional schedule and actually stick to it. Is it possible? You bet it is. And we are talking all about it today. Welcome to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. I'm Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher and current homeschool mom. And even though I've been a resource creator since 2014, I've realized that printables alone aren't all you need in order to thrive as a teacher or homeschool parent. That's why I also created this show and got certified as a life coach to help you finally kick burnout to the curb and feel confident with whatever challenges come your way. With the right mindset strategies and new teaching inspiration, you're going to be well on your way to your best teacher life. Now, let's go. Welcome to the podcast today, my teacher friend. So many exciting things are happening over here at Wife Teacher Mommy. I hope you've got some amazing, incredible things happening in your life too. Think about it. What are the great things happening in your life? I'm sure you could name a few right now. But if I were to name a few here over at Wife Teacher Mommy, first, as you may already know, we are still working hard on Educate and Rejuvenate. So much preparation goes into this that my team and I have been working on since January. We continue chugging away at it each day and connecting with presenters. Having them here on the podcast has been really fun. I've been loving connecting with them and hearing their stories and what they have to offer and what they'll be sharing at the event. And I'm loving how many of you are so excited about Educate and Rejuvenate and attending. We've already sold as of the time of recording, we've sold over, let's see, it was over 400 tickets already. I think almost 500 tickets. Amazing. We're so excited. We had over 3000 join us last year and I anticipate we'll have at least that many again this year. So really excited. And next, I'm super excited to announce a secret project that I've been working on for at least six months now. And I'm so excited that I can finally tell you that we are launching our first physical product. And this is something I've dreamed about over years and it is a teacher planner. And I'm really excited about it because I know there are a lot of teacher planners out there. So you might be like, why do we need to launch another one? But here's the deal. This one is different than other planners because I feel like the interesting thing is now as a business owner, there are so many planners like for business owners out there that include like goal setting pages and mindset things and everything like that. But teacher planners, there's always a lot that needs to go into a teacher planner. So usually it's just like, you know, all the planning pages and everything and kind of skip over the goals and setting intentions and everything. And I personally think that teachers need that too. You need to be able to set goals and intentions for your year. And 
you know, figure out how you're going to break it down, how you're going to make them happen and how to kind of get your mindset in the right place for the next year. So the thing I love about this planner is it really helps you with your life, with your goals, but then also it includes everything that you would, would expect in a t-shirt planner, all the planning pages, checklists, birthdays, password trackers, everything. They're all in there and it's all full color and beautiful and luxury leather bound and comes in a hard box. Like this is a premium planner. So exciting excited about it. Pre-orders begin on May 7th, which is only two days away from when this episode airs. So it's actually pretty likely if you're not listening in the first two days. So you can go to our website and order a planner, whether it's in pre-order or even if it's, you know, just ordering it by the time you're listening a few months, just a few months down the line. So many bonuses though. If you're listening before we get the inventory, which I guess will be at the end of June or early July, we are including a ton of bonuses if you pre-order this planner which include a free ticket to educate and rejuvenate, our printable and digital planners, so you have those to use while you wait, summer learning packets, our best-selling editable subbinders, so many things that you get for free, including when you pre-order this t-shirt planner. And that's the fun thing about having, <laughs> having been in business for nine years and having this huge inventory of digital products is that we can always make our offers so no-brainer and so exciting because we just have so many things like, oh yeah, we'll add that for you. So we love making these offers just so valuable for you because we know you do so much and you deserve it. And then there's one more super secret thing. I'm really excited to tell you about this month, which is an opportunity to get together in person on a boat in 2024. And that's all I'm going to say for now, but stay tuned in May. Make sure you're on our email list because I might not be able to mention it here on the podcast. So make sure that you are subscribed. You can go to wifeteachermommy.com and fill out any of the forms that'll add you to our email list. So you can hear all about that. But anyways, that was a little bit of me sharing some really exciting things going on in my life. But the reason I do that is because one, I love to share and connect with you. And I think a lot of you have been cheering me on with all these things we're doing too, and you appreciate it. And I, I just love that. It makes my day and I'm here to cheer you on too. So I want to hear your wins. What are your exciting things that are going on in your life? Tell me, I can't wait to hear about them. Okay. But let's dive into today's topic, which is how to make an intentional schedule and actually stick to it. Now, first, let's talk about why this is important. And I kind of want to dive into that word intentional, because if we don't set an intention, just kind of like I was talking about the teacher planner, like if we don't set an intention for our school year, or we don't set an intention for our week or whatever it is that we're planning, things will just happen. Things will come up. And if we go with the flow too much, we might feel a bit overwhelmed and we might feel a bit scattered, right? So the reason why making an intentional schedule is really helpful because instead of like feeling like a squirrel going from thing to thing, which believe me, I've fallen into that trap so many times, we all have, but we want to try to prevent that as much as we can. And setting an intentional schedule is how we do that. So I'm going to kind of break down the steps that I do to create my intentional schedule. And this is what I do every single week to make sure that we can get all the things done that we need to. And we am talking about like, I'm also helping like my team, but also my family and, you know, the, my kids who I homeschool, you know, who I teach. So for you to be like the students you teach or your children, if you're teaching them or your family and all the people you're working with, making sure that you all can work together and get those things done. So first thing I do is I do a to-do list or a brain dump. I actually call it a brain dump first because I'm literally just getting everything down on paper of what... What my brain is telling me I need to get done this week. And I'm not filtering it out at this point. Like I'm not saying like, oh, I actually don't need to do that this week. Right now I'm just writing down everything because if it's in your brain, if your brain is telling you that I need to get this done, then it's gonna just keep being there. It's just gonna keep nagging you. And it's like, if it's only in your brain and it's not on paper, you are going to just keep coming back to it and like trying to remind yourself because your brain is trying to help you not forget, right? We're getting everything down so you can hold it on a physical piece of paper and be like, okay, here are all the things. And it's no longer this running to-do list in your head that is, you know, causing you to possibly think like, oh, I have so much to do. And then you have feelings of overwhelm because you're thinking you have so much to do, right? We're getting it all down on a piece of paper so we can look at it as an outside observer. This is what I love about brain dumps. I love it for to-dos. I love it for just when you're feeling overwhelmed or whatever. But at the beginning of the week, I always do this brain dump of just like, what is everything my brain is telling me that I need to get done this week or that is going on this week, right? Get it all down. <laughs> okay, that is step one. Step two is I prioritize. So I go through that list. First, I just look through all of it, like I mentioned, like, like an outside observer looking at it. 
And then I think to myself, what is high priority? And you can kind of break it like high, medium, and low priority. And it's really important to do this because prioritizing, a lot of times we don't do this. We just like, what is the next thing that comes up when we just go to it, right? And this is also what comes down to important and urgent. You might have some of both. You likely will have some of both of these on your list. Now, I learned about this concept of important versus urgent from one of my life coaches named Jody Moore, but it actually originated from Eisenhower. He talked about the difference between important and urgent. And, you know, Eisenhower did a lot in his life, including like be president and all the things. And then it was later expertly put into this matrix by Stephen Covey from the seven habits of highly effective people. And he put it into this matrix called the urgency matrix. But first, before that, we're going to talk about the urgency effect, what often happens. So sometimes we prioritize things that are urgent over things that are actually more important than the urgent things. And this is called the urgency effect. So sometimes we continue working on the things that are most urgent, like timely, like, oh, this has to be done right now. This has to be today. But it might be keeping us from doing important things that maybe don't have a certain time they have to be done by, but they're important, like towards our life goals or towards, you know, our students' progress or towards, you know, knowing where we're at and having a plan, like making the time to sit down and plan. That might not feel like, oh, well, there's not a deadline for me to sit down and plan. So that's not urgent, but it might be more important. It might be even more important to like, if that urgent thing can wait just a minute to do this important thing, right? So it's important to just note what is urgent, what is important. And I find that this urgency effect is more prominent in people who would call themselves busy, okay? So if you feel busy, you're going to constantly be jumping from thing to thing, especially because if you tell yourself you're busy, I'm going to tell you this, that that is something you're thinking, right? That's a thought, It's not necessarily a circumstance. Like I am a busy person. You might think that that's the circumstance of your life, but actually maybe it's what you're thinking about the list of things that are in your life, right? Telling ourselves we're busy is like, that's an adjective. It's something we tell ourselves. And even if like, okay, you have a lot on your list, maybe you have 17 things on your to-do list. Like that's quite a bit, but just neutralize it in that way. Not like I'm so busy. It's okay. I have 17 things. How am I going to get these done? Because when you put that busy label on, you sudden, that can often lead to feelings of overwhelm and stress. And that is what leads us to this urgency effect of, oh, this is urgent. I need to do this right now. You know, we often find ourselves doing that. So I'm going to explain that Eisenhower matrix a little bit. So there's things that are urgent and important. And those, if they're both urgent and they're important, like, so urgent is like timely. There's a deadline. It needs to be done by this time. Somebody's waiting on me, whatever. Important means it has to do with like your life goals or it's just something that's really important to your core values or, you know, the actual progress of what the end goal end result of whatever you're doing is. So if it's both of those things, then yeah, that should be high. That should be top, top priority. Now, next is something that's not urgent and important. It might be taking time to actually analyze your student data, like what their scores are, what it means and everything. Like maybe you're just like quickly like, oh, I need to grade all these things. I need to do all these things. Oh, and I'll get to analyzing it later. Things like that. Even though you know that analyzing it is super important, you might put it off because it's not urgent. And you might keep putting it off because again, it's not urgent. And I find myself doing this too. A lot of times, even with like stats in my company or whatever, I'm like, okay, I can do that later because these other urgent things are going on. And a lot of it is just realizing and noticing, be like, okay, I realize this is going on. I'm going to make a plan to make sure that thing does get done. Even if, again, even if you do need to do some urgent things first, right? You're just making sure that it doesn't just get completely put on the back burner if it's important, but not urgent. Now, here's another part of the matrix is urgent and not important. This might be something where it's like somebody else needs this thing, but it's maybe not that important to you or even your students or whatever. A lot of times these aren't bad things. Like maybe it's an unexpected text or phone call or a coworker who like wants advice or something, or, you know, you get asked for a letter of recommendation or you have some emails you feel like you need to attend to, but they might not be as important. Or maybe it's even like grocery shopping, for example, like, oh yeah, my family does need to eat, right? And maybe Maybe we don't have much in our fridge right now. We need to eat, but we can question the the urgency of it. So first we're like, does it need to be done today 
Or is this just something unrealistic you're putting on yourself too? Like you might also be like, oh, this is so urgent. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, maybe I could do this in a few days. Or maybe I could tell my mom that I will call her back tomorrow. Okay, the next part of the matrix is urgent and not important. This is the really interesting one. And this is where a lot of times the urgency factor can come in. Because if somebody comes to you with a demand, let's say you get an unexpected text or an unexpected phone call or an email in your inbox that has something in it that wasn't anything you were planning on that week, or that day. And it maybe, and it's not important because it's not tied into like your core values or your goals or the things you really need to get done that week. Or maybe you open the fridge and realize that, oh, we are out of milk right now. We need to go get it right now or something. The first thing you can do is when something comes up and it's not important, it's not completely in line to your goals and it feels urgent. It feels urgent right in that moment. First is questioning the urgency. So must it really be done today? Or is it just something you're putting on yourself and feeling like it needs to be done right now, but maybe like you could check your email later, or maybe you don't even need milk that day, or maybe, you know, you'd be fine with a piece of toast in the morning, right? So just questioning that urgency. The other thing you can do is figure out, do you have to be the one to do it? So if you need groceries, can you get them delivered or go online quick and do grocery pickup on the way home instead of going to the store, which takes a lot more time. So you can save that time and do things that are more, more important and urgent and important. Or grading, are your students old enough to help or does it even need to be graded? Another thing you can do is eliminate if it's not important or not urgent, especially, that, which is the next category. But another thing is dishes and chores. Can you teach your kids to help out more? Like it's, you know, finding ways that you can get more help and get more support on those things that are maybe urgent, but not as important. And then that last category, which I kind of mentioned already, is obviously not important and not urgent. So if it's not important and it's not urgent at all, does that even need to be on your to-do list this week? Does it even need to be on your to-do list at all? Those are just the questions that you get to ask yourself and then you get to answer and have in mind as you make your plan. And I feel like we could potentially do a whole episode just about this topic of what's urgent, what's important, what's not. Um, DM me on Instagram if you'd like me to, but we're going to stop here for now since I have more steps for us to get through today. But we will be diving into this a little bit more when I teach my class about this topic with Wife Teacher Mommy Club next week on May 11th. So I'm really excited to dive more into how to make an intentional schedule and actually kind of workshop it and do it together. I like when I get to put together these Google Docs and send them out and we kind of get to go through them together and we get to workshop and we get to strategize and ask questions and really like, not just like listen, like while I'm driving or whatever, I'm like, oh, this is nice. But it's like, no, we're actually doing the work. We're making sure it happens. I just love doing that with our members. If you are a member, be sure to mark your calendars and join this call on May 11th. If you're not, be sure to go to wifeteachermommy.com slash club if you'd like to learn a little bit more. We have limited invites right now while we're kind of revamping things to get ready for Educate and Rejuvenate, but you may be able to snag one. And if you're listening later, you'll have this replay too, because we don't like gatekeep past replays of coaching calls. When you join the club, you get to listen to any past calls that you'd like, watch or listen to them. And even though you aren't there live to workshop it, you'll be able to still learn from the replays and kind of do it along with us, ask questions in the group, and then join the next live workshop, which is so fun. I am interrupting this episode for just a moment because I want to remind you about our summer event, Educate and Rejuvenate. Here's what a few of our attendees from last year had to say about it. So Shelby said, you did amazing for your first year. I've teared up, came to realization, and honestly got my fire coming back. You and your team have created an experience that so many teachers have truly needed and wanted. I know I said it so many times, but thank you and thank you and thank you for working so hard for all of us educators. Wife Teacher Mommy is truly a community I always want to be a part of. Keep it up. Holly says, thank you for an incredible learning and growing experience with the most professional, intelligent, experienced, generous presenters. I enjoyed every presentation, lesson, talk, and effort. This was the best PD I have ever attended. Thank you. And Fifi said, thank you for your desire to encourage and rejuvenate teachers. You provided hope, joy, and inspiration for so many. I'm so grateful. Go to educateandrejuvenate.com to learn more and grab your ticket to join us this year. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. So first we have, we brain dumped everything, right? We went in and we kind of labeled what's most important, prioritized high, medium, low. We kind of kept in mind what parts of this are urgent, which parts of this are important and, and like the layers of that. So if it's like urgent and important or not urgent and so on. Next, what we're going to do is break down day by day. So kind of make a checklist for each day. So this is where you kind of take the tasks and arrange them and you pick, okay, what do I want to do Monday? What do I want to do Tuesday? And so forth. So you can kind of assign each task a day. 
And this is like usually the fastest part for me. But at this time, I usually kind of, I kind of combine this, this breakdown day by day with the next step, which is time block it. So first what I do is as I'm breaking down by day by day, I look at my calendar. For me, it's on Google Calendar, any scheduled appointments or recurring things that are always in there. So like meetings, you know, obviously like if you have a set school schedule or work schedule, your routines of how you usually homeschool your kids if you're a homeschool mom, any activities that you take your kids to each week or that you do each week, things outside of school or committees you're on, anything that is scheduled that week has a set time. I look at that. So then as I'm breaking down day by day, I know like, okay, I can probably have this much capacity this day. This day is a little more open. So I can put these there. So then you just kind of have that to-do list for each day. And then after that, I time block it. I don't just leave it a to-do list, but I actually block it out. Like from this time to this time, I'm going to do this thing. So first, again, you have those scheduled meetings. Next, after the scheduled meetings, before I even do the to-dos, like you have your list of to-dos, right, that you've created. But before I pencil them in, I find where my self-care needs to be. For this, this is my workout, space to breathe, coaching, therapy. I make sure all of those things get in there and even some time to like sit down and read a book and make sure that I actually have times set aside for those things because they are important to me. They're not urgent. So if they're, they're obviously because they're not urgent, they're not going to happen if I don't pencil them in and make sure they happen because they are important. So this is where that time blocking really helps. Then um, you fill in your additional things, all the to-dos in your calendar. So you like say, hey, I'm going to grade these papers from this time to this time, or I'm going to schedule these appointments that like I haven't scheduled yet, but I need to call and schedule them on Tuesday from five to six. On Tuesday from four to 4.30, I'm going to call and schedule those appointments that I've been putting off for a while. So then you have it in your calendar. And again, once you do this, it frees up so much brain space because you aren't constantly having to think of what's left to do or if you missed anything. You don't even necessarily have to be like, I mean, obviously you can have your to-do list there and check things off as you do them on your calendar, but you don't even have that looming to-do list because it's just like, all you need to do that day is be like, okay, what am I doing? You open up your calendar, your Google calendar. Or for me, I use a combo of like my schedule things are in Google calendar, but then I have a paper planner for where I do my time blocking. And I just pull that out. I'm like, what am I doing today? And then I look at it and then that's what I'm doing. And that just frees up a lot of brain space. So you don't have to have it all constantly running in your head all the time, because when you need it, when it's time, it's there. So you know, and you don't have to keep it in there all the time. So it just frees up that brain space for you. Now, the important thing to do is you time block that I've learned from experience is to leave some open space for the unexpected. And this leaves some time for rest and for when unexpected things come up, like, you know, a team member comes to you with something, or you do get that unexpected text or phone call, because I'm not saying we don't ever want to help people, right? We want to leave time for that too. So if you have some open space then you're able to kind of do things with that. So for example, for me this week, I had like planned on Monday from a certain time to a certain time, I was going to schedule emails to go out to, you know, all of you who are on my email list. And, but then there was a thing that came up that it was like, oh, I don't know if I can schedule that email yet because I need to make sure this one thing is set in stone before I can email about it. So I wasn't able to do that right then, but I didn't panic because I just pulled out my planner and I was like, okay, well, tomorrow I had scheduled to do outlining these podcast episodes. I'll just do that today and I'll swap them. So because I already had that mapped out, I didn't need to panic. I was just able to kind of move things around. So it's not saying you can't ever be flexible with your schedule, but it's just making sure that you have that space, but you also have an intentional plan. So it's not just winging it all the time. You're able to have something to start from. Now, the last part of this is following through. Now, this is the really important part, right? Because we can make a plan all day long, but sometimes we throw it out the window the second something goes wrong. So if like, you know, you on Sunday night, make this really intentional plan for your week and then Monday morning, your alarm goes off and you miss your workout and maybe the whole day you're now just like, oh no, I'm so behind or whatever. So the big part is following through and we've all done this. It's important to figure out the root cause of why we didn't follow through so we can learn from it and just start to change the pattern over time so it'll happen less. And using this process alone, like to map out and plan your week is already helpful because you'll have something to actually stick to that'll make it a lot easier because you'll have something to follow, but then also continue to evaluate when things don't go exactly how you plan to be like, Hmm, what is it that happened there? And just give yourself so much grace in the process because we are all learning. We're all human. So when you notice, just get curious, like, why did that happen? How are you feeling? 
If you were feeling that way, what were you thinking that was causing you to feel that way? As I've talked about time and time again on this podcast, our feelings are created by what we're thinking about what is going on. It's not necessarily about what's going on itself, but what we're thinking about it. So if we're thinking we're feeling overwhelmed and that's why we don't do it, then we can just notice that and figure out what went wrong and how we can kind of change that around. And we'll be talking about this even more on our member call. I'm really excited to be coaching members on this topic and really going over their schedules, what's working, what's not on the call. I'll be sharing that Google doc and we'll workshop together to not only listen and learn these tips, but start taking action together on the call. And we'll also talk about how we can make systems for when the unexpected comes up. Like I went over a little bit of that here, but we're going to talk about it a bit more and how it doesn't mean you have to just throw away the towel with your schedule like so many of us often do. And the other thing I want to quickly mention is remind you of that teacher life planner that is coming out, how it includes those goal setting pages and a spread for you to kind of make your ideal week. So you can have like, do your planning like this each week, but you can also, one thing I love is to go through and kind of make an ideal week, which obviously isn't going to look the same week to week because you'll have like different appointments and different things coming up. But you can kind of have like something that you get to start with each week. Like, okay, this is kind of like, this is when I want to exercise. This is when I want to do self-care. This is when my contract hours are. This is what time I want to leave. And kind of have like a framework to start with. So you're not starting from scratch at the beginning each week. That is always really helpful. So there's going to be over $369 in bonuses when we launch this planner. So you don't want to miss it. And if you're listening later, we will be hoping, I'm hoping we'll be offering this planner for years to come and it's undated. So you can purchase it now and start using it anytime. And thanks for listening today. I would love to see you on the next club member call, but either way, I will talk to you soon here on the podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step, come grab your ticket to join me at Educate Amber Juvenate, the education event of the year on June 27th and 28th, 2023. This year, we have two incredible live keynotes, Joe Dombrowski, aka Mr. D, and best-selling author and video creator, Christina Kuzmich. We have over 60 incredible speakers speaking on topics such as math, language arts, reading, social emotional learning, classroom management, homeschooling, and tackling burnout. We start the day with a workout together each morning. We have panels with the presenters, and you'll even get to join live life coaching with me and even raise your hand if you would like to be coached. Plus, we give away tons of prizes throughout the event too. It is the best PD you could ever attend. And all of this is happening from the comfort of your own home. It's just $19 for a ticket and past attendees have said that this is what finally lit a fire under them to enjoy teaching again and that it was well worth every penny. Go to educateandrejuvenate.com to learn more about the 2023 event. Or if you're listening to this later, that link will show you what's up next as we will continue to do events like this. I hope to see you at Educate and Rejuvenate.